From the moment of our birth to the very last instant before death, we spend our entire lives making decisions. These decisions can be life-altering, like deciding which college to go to, or completely insignificant, like choosing between ice cream flavors. But in each of these decisions, there is something that's as crucial and as unique to the human experience as consciousness is. It's the feeling we have that we are the ones in control. The sensation that what I choose is completely up to me. It's our free will. This concept runs deep in our logic and intuition. It's foundational to the way we see ourselves, perceive others, and structure society. But what if free will was nothing more than a feeling? What if none of our actions, our decisions, could ever truly be in our control? Hi, my name is Nick Jankovic, and free will may just be an illusion. Allow me to explain. Free will has been a topic of philosophical debate for millennia, and for most of history, many believed in its existence. However, this belief was challenged when physics was brought into the picture. Classical physics, which studies the world as we know it, explains everything from why apples fall to how galaxies form. But more importantly for this topic, classical physics is deterministic. This means that everything is an unbroken chain of cause and effect. Renowned French mathematician Pierre Simon Laplace gave us the implications of this when he said that if we could somehow know everything there was to know about the universe at this moment in time, then we could use the laws of physics to determine exactly what would happen tomorrow, or next week, or next month, or even in a thousand years. Well, doesn't the same logic apply to us humans? Famous theoretical physicist Brian Greene says that since we are made up of the same particles and obey the same laws as everything else around us, then our choices, just like the path of a falling apple, should be perfectly predictable by science. In other words, those choices would not be free. On the other hand, quantum physics, which studies the really tiny, is not deterministic. In fact, it can be perfectly random. But this doesn't give us free will either. As Brian Greene says, if it comes from a random process, it's like throwing the dice. And throwing the dice to get an outcome is not what we mean by free will. It wasn't in our control. So, our universe is a mix. A mix of classical and quantum, of determinism and randomness. But neither of these two things gives us the free will which we so cherish. Sam Harris, neuroscientist and author of the book Free Will, expresses this same view. But instead of talking about atoms and the laws of physics, he believes it's our genes and environment that shape our brains and thus cause our decisions. Now, aren't these just two ways of saying the same thing? After all, atoms do make up your genes and environment. So, physics might be the more fundamental explanation, but in the context of our daily lives, and in the terms which we better understand, it's our parents, our friends, the videos we watch, songs we listen to, people we follow, and our genes that all coalesce to bring about our choices. So despite what we may feel, we don't have free will. But what does this mean for our lives? I see two things. First, the absence of free will directly impacts how we should perceive others. We all judge people, and I'm guilty of this too, of course. Just think politics. We are so critical of anyone on the opposite side that all it takes is a few words. She's a Trump supporter, or he's a communist, for us to dislike a complete stranger. But if you approach this from a no free will standpoint, you quickly realize that the people you're judging never truly chose their actions or beliefs. Those things are just a product of their genes and environment. Now, there's nothing wrong with judging someone's beliefs, but we should try to understand the causes behind those beliefs before hating the people who hold them. 
And we should always remember that if put in their positions, with their exact genes and their exact environments, it would be impossible for us to turn out any different. This may be a little hard to accept, but it opens up the door for so much more empathy and understanding. Secondly, free will being an illusion also tells us a lot about our own selves. Does it mean that nothing matters and we should just stop trying? Of course not. Sam Harris puts this beautifully. He says, we are part of a system and therefore what we do matters. You can't take credit for your talents, but it matters that you use them. And you can't really be blamed for your weaknesses, but it matters that you correct them. Think about it this way. If everyone is a direct product of his or her genes and environment, and we are the environments of those around us, then we play an enormous role in shaping those with whom we interact. I'm here today as a result of my own environment. It was this podcast two years ago which first introduced me to the topic of free will. And just as they influenced me, my hope is that I, as part of your environment on this stage tonight, can help influence you to be a positive environment to those around you. So let's strive to bring out the best in our own selves so that we may bring out the best in others. Thank you.